talking about it a oh, little no. bit throughout the day that it feels like teams are misplaced. Demonte uh, and Clutch really kind of got, I'm going to say, soft flamed <laughs> uh, yeah. by their priority on the Renekton. We just saw Quinn taken into it and how abusive it can be. So let's see what Damwon have in store with this pick or if uh, Nugri or Showmaker are just so much better at piloting this champion. Already, I like how Flamengo's composition is coming together. A lot of space control, a lot of zoning, zoning capabilities with the Nico and the Thresh often paired together as Canyon gets his hands on his favorite champion at the moment. It is the Talia. And speaking of favorite champions, of course, Nuclear going to go towards the Kaiser if he can get it. It's not going to be the Elise combination with the Renekton, but we've seen in the past that this combo is about as punishing. Yeah, there's still so much potential for getting around the map as quickly as possible, setting up that dive. You don't necessarily need your jungler to take the damage when you have a Renekton pending on the matchup there. So my eyes are on Robo. What is he going to find? Is that going to be the Nico in the top lane for him in a ranged matchup to try to deal with this Renekton? Or when he sees the Talia and the potential of a dive coming in, is he going to look for something that's, okay, you're going to dive me and I need to be ready to take that type of aggression? Well, still yet to know who's going to be playing the Renekton. My feeling is that it's going to be Showmaker. He did play a lot more games on the champion, and Damwon do love to pick late for Noggery. They like to get him into a position where his pick is providing as much surprise as possible. And look, albeit they are on the blue side, so not able to really surprise Flamengo that much. But as we're seeing in the bands, that Zaya that we were talking about before is going to be taken away from BRTT. Rarell's Alistar might make it through, however. Yeah, that could be frightening. That being said, I mean, how yeah, worried that's what are I you thought. about it? <laughs> I'm very They're worried. They're pretty worried. They're pretty worried. <laughs> I, I think you have to respect Ben Alistar, especially at this stage in the World Championship. Um, again, we'll probably see Barrel pull out his Alistar at some point during this championship. He is amazing on it. He certainly is. I think that uh, Barrel's Alistar is not necessarily a laning phase ban. And I think that if Flamengo are going to attack Darmwon, they need to attack the laning phase, which is what my argument would be for leaving the Alistair available. Because I feel like if they're getting to a point where, you know, Darmwon are comfortably team fighting, then uh, you've probably got pretty close to losing anyway. This is probably going to be BRTT's pickup right there. Okay, so I did want him to go for something with a lot more firepower in the lane phase. Uh, he had a, a couple of different bands thrown at him in the Draven and the Zaya. So I was like, he's got the access to things like Lucian, like Caitlyn, like Ezreal. Um, now the thing is, is whenever Caitlyn's in a game in Europe, is they decide to split the map and force vertical jungling. So Caitlyn has to play weak side and she doesn't get to abuse her long range and how dominant she is in uh, in the map. I'm unsure if Damwon will look to do the same thing, but typically Caitlyn as a pick doesn't work in the LEC because of that strategy. Well, this is most likely the rise in the hands of Noggery as Beryl's gonna lock away the pike. We've got Pike Kaiser against the Thresh and the Caitlyn on the bottom side of the map. Certainly spicy, but that range advantage is certainly gonna be there for BRTT. And it could also mean that Beryl doesn't have to sit in that lane phase. You know, if things start going yeah. sideways in that 2v2 bot side, Beryl can be like, see ya, mate, just hard farm this one out. Caitlyn's gonna push it into you. And he what? starts roaming around with Canyon. Well, that is an Aatrox, and that is still gonna be locked in. Flamengo valuing the comfort on the champion, regardless of what the numbers may say on 919. And of course, if you look at the recent nerfs to Aatrox, it was his wave clear that was particularly hurt. Um, lost a lot of damage when he's using that Q on the minions itself. And that means that he doesn't just get to force you under a tower and kind of chunk you out with those Qs. Still, if he lands triple Q on you, it is going to hurt. Uh, but against something like Arise, who can root you up and kind of maneuver around you, I think this is going to be a really tough matchup. Yeah, could be really scary here. As, as we expected, Showmaker is looking like he's going to be on the Renekton. 21 seconds. And that is going to be confirmed. So Damwon, I like this composition a little bit more than what they showed us in their first outing. Felt a little bit like a show match with the fact that Showmaker got to play on his LeBlanc with the fact that Nogari was on his Vladimir. This time this composition looks a lot more fluid because the gank assist for Canyon is outrageous. Just set up, lock them down. You got the CC from the Renekton, the CC from the Rise, and Canyon can just rock in, flip them back, and have so much damage to get away from. Now, I want to talk about 
zone control right now. Mm -hmm. Because BRTT is on the Caitlyn, one of our longest range champions in the game. You said at the very beginning, when you see things like Nico, like Thresh, there's so much uh, zone control for Flamengo. On the other side, Down won't actually have some pretty short range champions. Uh, Kaisa mid range ADC, uh, Rise mid range, uh, and then Renekton as the. Uh, the melee champion. So I'm curious, how do Damwon actually break through that zone control? Can Flamengo keep their ADC safe? Can they keep Damwon away from him and allow these team fights to go through longer, to walk through? I think it's about Flamengo getting vision so that they can deny flanks from Damwon, if it's going to be me. But ladies and gentlemen, here we are, our third game of the day. Damwon taking on Flamengo. And they certainly have the sixth man of the crowd behind them. Damn right they do, and maybe they'll need it moving into this one as well. As we described Damon's first game as feeling like they were on a European holiday, hopefully this is going to feel a little bit more serious as Damon already piling in. I mean, if they want a vacation jungle. in France, they definitely need to tighten things up. Yep. Um, again, we talk about that blueprint that uh, Royal Youth were able to run through at Damon and really punish Nuclear and Barrel in particular, so... We'll see. Uh, well, I talked about the split map that usually happens onto Caitlyn to force her to play weak side so she can't be really abusive. You do see a, uh, an immediate invade and a lot of vision being placed around figuring out where Shrimp is going to start on this Rek'Sai. So my eyes are on Canyon's pathing and what he's going to do with this information. Yeah. Expecting a red to Krug start, which is, of course, the fastest way to get towards that level three. An understandable thing, as you can see, a potential... Uh, Interesting situation if uh, you're looking at the vision, but it's not actually BRTT up there. There have been some lane swaps across the world, but we'll see. A delayed invade. And we may actually see the split map, but it's actually Damwon who are allowing the potential for Caitlyn to play strong side. Now, this can do two things. Yes, you can say that BRTT, if this actually is vertical jungling, because it could also be that Canyon rocks across mid lane and then just secures his own red, or level two ganks Robo in the top lane. Now, uh, who's which lane, guys? As uh, that is level two already the flash, and that had to be respected. There was no way the Robo was going to survive if he had have been hit by that seismic shove. So already, Canyon, level two, steals away a red buff and immediately uh, basically wins lane for Showmaker, who's in the top lane. Yeah, but the sacrifice might be that Shrimp, you can see he is sprinting towards the other red buff. We'll see if Canyon lets it go, decides that, yep, he's just going to farm the top side. Okay. So the map is split now, where Dan one own the top side of it. So BRTT will be aggressive on this Caitlyn. You can see he's already zoned away barrel and nuclear. Now the thing is, though, is that down one, don't play through the bot lane. If no. Nuclear and Barrel just have to kind of take the short end of the stick, then that's actually fine. Damn one can say, okay, you can have that free lane phase. That means that we get a free lane phase for guys like Showmaker uh, on the top side in this Renekton matchup right now, which we believe that we can just snowball harder. Great hook is going to land there onto Barrel. They're going to commit for it as well. So much damage. The flip back onto Lucy, but Barrel is just going to play it safe. Doesn't even use the flash and eats the great health. He's going to be okay. Up to 50% already. Which then puts emphasis that if Lucy Lucy and BRTT find opportunities like that, it has to count. They need to make sure that if this is the advantage, if this is the trade that Dan Wan is giving them, that they need to find advantages down here. So with this slow crash, I would actually love to see Shrimp either threaten for uh, plates or even potentially threaten a dive if these slow crashes keep getting built up. Well, Showmaker level three does have access to Slice Dice and the Ruthless Predator which could just smell, spell death here. He goes for it, the flash in to try and guarantee, but Canyon presses his buttons in the wrong times. It doesn't even matter though. First Blood goes down, and Damwon have struck first for the first time here at Worlds. And it's gonna be free for that, because Shrimp doesn't have any reason to be on the top side of the map. You can see he's uh, playing with the Scuttle Crab right now. He does have access to his Krugs. But otherwise, his camps were all down. He was going to be spending time towards bot lane, which means that Showmaker can continue to play aggressive. That's There's the a flash. flash in. Halo Blades needs to be respected, but the Seismic Shove is going to land. Robo is going to come down and does get there first, but still, can you? Trying to juke around. Goku gets on in there, and Showmaker, so much damage. The first kill does go over to Flamengo, but Robo is looking for another one. Nogari completely out of mana. What was he doing there? A double kill to Flamengo. Shrimps on the board. And 
this is so important. Again, remember, Damwon chose to split the map, and Shrimp has now broken and ripped it back. Don't play with that, though. Yeah, Showmaker, a lot of damage, but didn't have Flash, remember, so Shrimp tunnels away to safety. Again, so important, though. You now have two kills onto Shrimp. Maybe he can start fighting back with this uh, Hail of Blades, Rek'Sai, to get more control around the top side of the map to say that, okay, BRTT, Lucy, you guys are fine. You got the strong side of the map. Dan one have misplayed this, and now we can get our foot back into taking control over the top side of the map. Well, you can see just outside of Vision is Canyon, just looking to set up a tent on the top side. Robo not having a great time. They are ahead in gold, though. Those couple of kills certainly were good news. We're going to find the Ruthless Predator, that, though, as Canyon looking for it. Infernal Chains land, but it's going to be onto the Crocodile, and they don't even need the Seismic Shove until the very end. And another kill goes into the hands of the Talia. And it's just frustrating. You can see it in the CS. Uh, it's 25-7. Reminder that it's Showmaker on the Renekton that's in the uh, the top side. But basically is you know, four times the CS that Aatrox has right now. And now it's going to start bleeding into experience. And that is only going to go from bad to worse. But here was kind of the the glimpse of hope. You can see that Flamingo, they're here to party. They're here to oh, play. Yeah. They are not going to go quietly into the night. Uh, and like you said, you called out the mistake. Uh, Nugri doesn't have any mana. He really can't participate in this fight, so he's just a body walking around. Yeah. And that leads to the double for Shrimp. Yeah, and I really like the kills going on to Shrimp as well, because he can translate this advantage that he'll have around the map. And stopping Canyon from being able to go wherever he wants willy-nilly is really important. Unfortunately, may not necessarily be the case, given that Canyon does have a couple of kills himself. Not quite at the Runic Echoes just yet. Shrimp also still building towards his warrior enchant is Nagari just playing as safely as he can. As Shrimp and Goku, this is frightening. We are going to get the flash forward. That's the Pop Blossom, and Pop goes the rise. All too easy for Flamengo as Showmaker, he wants it. It's a big call to me because now he's focusing on the Rek'Sai. He'll get that kill, and now Goku has to run away. A one for one after the teleport. Still one for one in the TP, but that means that Robo finally gets a chance to breathe as well. So yes, yeah, Showmaker is continuing to snowball, continuing to get stronger, but Robo's finally getting access to a CS wave. Uh, Frosker, and this is Canyon on the bottom side of the map. I've never seen this before. As Beryl's going to dive forward, wants to get the stun. The seismic shot avoided just so narrowly. Lucy, oh god, the turnaround for Flamengo. Outplayed by the Brazilian bottom lane. And so well done from Lucy. You called the sidestep right there. Turns around, finds the death sentence into the tower aggro. And Flamengo across the board have come alive. They have a gold lead above down one. Anyone saw this like LCK? They're going to they're gonna speed run. It's a big accomplishment, <laughs> Alex. It was a hundred gold, Frosco. Come on. That is not the stat that the we stat wanted to focus counts. on. The fact that they are answering this team that is so happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the early game is just beautiful from this Brazilian squad. And you'll have Damwon sweating at this stage because they were confidence plays that were answered with the same level of confidence as Nogari caught in transition. The Hail of Blade, certainly a problem. Sidestepping, though, and that's a seismic shove you didn't want to get caught in. Beryl doesn't get the stun, but the flingback's there, and the double kill comes down for Canyon. And just like that, as we're celebrating, we're so happy to see You've got to take the moments, though, Frostgren, OK? Really hit back, down one gaming, suddenly find a live. They silence the arena. The gold lead has now swung wildly back into their favor, and Beryl was like, bot lane is not going well. <laughs> I am heading mid. Nuclear, and, good luck. And this is exactly what happens in the majority of games. You know how there were there were passengers in the first game for Dharma? Generally, it's Nuclear that's in the passenger seat and everybody else is just doing stuff. Just running around, his, his seatbelt on, just being normal. You know, everything's absolutely fine, trying to pick up whatever farm he can. And Beryl is outside of that lane having a party. Nogger just hanging Canyon on the car, it's like Mad just Max. Killing people is three versus four, things like that around the map. And Nuclear doesn't really get to, to, to play with them. As we have a look at this one more time, this was just stunning yep, we from can BRTT and Lucy. Relive the Flamingo heydays for that small moment that we had it with Lucy's outplay. Mm -hmm. BRTT's response, yeah, that's right. That's a man who knows how to work a crowd. Damn right it is. But let's see if he can continue to do it as uh, this is the same play. I was wondering whether this is back to live, but is just going to be a look at Canyon's double kill. Pretty elementary, honestly, in the end, as there are so many flips and flings from this squad. The Bone Skewer plus the Seismic Shove. Speaking of Bone Skewers, that's going to find Lucy, but avoids the stun. BRTT just offering auto after auto. It's only one pickaxe worth of damage, though, 
This is the problem. I mean, we always talk about Caitlyn being very strong in the laning phase early game, but then has this huge trough as you try and get towards damage relevance, and then you're back up again in the late game. But we are going to get towards that trough, and when it's BRTT that has it, that can be a problem because he is such a powerhouse for this squad. Bit of a dive topside, though, as that's another seismic shove. You've got to be looking for them circles because that means death. And it means that Flamingo needs to be able to trade something. And unfortunately, down one gaming are going to have the option to consistently look for these top lane plays because the only objective that they would trade bot side is something like a Cloud Drake. So Flamingo need to push their advantage on this bot side of the map or try to create a larger one while Robo is just taking the brunt end of Showmaker. Well, Cloud Drake is going to be taken here by Flamingo comfortably 10 minutes into the game. Now Shelly has reared her head in her own pit. We'll see whether we do get any swaps. Canyon was still topside, waiting for another counter gank as we are going to have Barely face checks. The hook is going to land. The playback's in and he just explodes. Lucy grabs the kill, but that's another assist going over to BRTT. So the play that Canyon and Showmaker were waiting for is they expected Robo to actually teleport up into the top side, and then they were immediately going to dive him again, pick up that gold, and then kill the tower. Robo actually instead walked down to the lane, and it looks like we're finally going to have the swap come in. You can see BRTT Lucy. They had that clever little trap play. They're now walking up top here, but Rift Hilt is going to be the next objective on the table, uh, and Showmaker after this back is going to be a really big deal. This is a very fed gator. He's even with his theoretical lane opponent, but uh, he's almost double the CS of Robo. He's had a really rough time. Back is going to get channeled, but uh, Goku going to stop it, so a little bit of a spanner in the works there. And it just means that Flamengo have to be now very creative about how they want to contest this Herald if they do. Um, because Showmaker will make his back, he's going to be very strong, Spear of Shoujin now comes back in, and as long as he's there, like, Robo doesn't count as a person right now. He's got a Kendall gym and some yeah. and some brown bags on his feet. He's, he's got the soldier build plus an orb. Yeah, he, he needs time to scale up. So this should actually be, if it's just clinical setup, a free objective for Damwon. And then there's just really nothing on the map that Flamengo can trade for it. So at this point, Flamengo wants to either figure out how they can break this, either through a pick or try to stall it out. Otherwise, Damwon are like, let's get this Rift out. Let's continue to snowball on this Renekton. And as long as he's there, we are so much stronger. Yep, Nogari with his teleport available. Showmaker's about to come back up, but that means Nogari is going to have bottom lane duty up against Robo there. So finally, we see top laners actually meet after our weird lane swap that we had earlier on. And it's 2.5k the lead. You can see the kill score is very even, but that uh, first turret blood going down and all of the plates that Darmon have been able to take and the lack thereof on the side of Flamengo is really ballooning this one. A little bit out of control. Still not out of the woods just yet on Flamengo's side, and they will have opportunities as this game goes on because, like we were talking about before, the way they play their composition, the way this composition is supposed to work, there are ways that they can attack the low range of Darmon like you illustrated earlier on. Yeah, but that means that BRTT again, needs to be ahead of the clock. And if you look at the total gold, he is very far down yeah. in terms of what the itemization has. You talked about the fact that he didn't get any plates in return. So this still feels like a very heavy win for Damwon Gaming as far as this early game is concerned. And has rushed the Spear of Sojourn as well. We've seen a lot of Black Cleavers. We've seen some Tank Renektons. But this is Showmaker wanting to be able to be a Showmaker in some of these team fights in this mid game. And Spear Sojin is just so strong because you, you talk about team fight and the fact that it gives Renekton really strong team fighting, but it also just makes him a great duelist as well. It's like best of both worlds. Allows him to do lots of stuff when he presses up. Here's the TLDR. And uh, Shelly gets her eye poked out and will now get taken down. Canyon will have his choice on where to put it. And I have a feeling that mid lane could be an opportunity as Beryl goes underwater, looks for Goku, but doesn't get him, dodges out of the way and is going to survive as Shelly is just plugged into the river and will now set up for a charge on this outer turret mid. Minion waves are going to crash, but charge. Is it actually going to get set up? Because you can see minions getting in the way for the moment, but it looks like Flamengo not going to be able to get rid of her. She will get that charge off successfully and gather some more of that plate gold. Yeah, but just a plate gank right there. Uh, Flamengo successfully collapsed around their mid lane tower to make sure that it didn't translate into the objective. Um, but that's what we were talking about with Damwon. Using the Rift Herald, continuing to snowball, getting that gold on necessary characters. And now we can start kicking them out into their side lanes and testing Flamengo's lane assignments. Because I don't actually know who can survive uh, with Showmaker's Renekton at this point. 
Especially no, Nagarish slowly but surely is building towards his uh, Seraph's Embrace. We'll see what he goes for next, but he has decided to just rush that item. But we know that the last time I saw Nagarish rise, he just sort of sat in a side lane and destroyed his lane opponent as far as the farm is concerned and things like that. And then at about 25, 27 minutes, won the game by himself. And I think that's kind of going to be the formation from Damwon, at least what they're looking to do here. It's going to be... Okay, Pop Blossom comes in. Immediately the flash from Nogari, though, as he's trying to turn it around. One versus two. This guy's a madman. And Flamengo are just going to run for the hills. It's going to be a setup where you have uh, Nogari and either Canyon or Barrel with him, and then Showmaker with either Canyon or Barrel. You have kind of these two roaming pieces in your Talia and your Pike, and then your two solo laners. And they're just going to force the lane assignments from Flamengo. And Flamengo are making the right call, trying to look for those picks like that, you know, using the Nico ult, uh, trying to find the flash, trying to catch anyone out. But if they don't capitalize on it, they are still slowly losing the map. Well, Ocean Drake going to be the first dragon that Darmon are going to go for. Of course, we got very used to oceans with our, I believe, eight of them that we had yesterday. It was a ludicrous amount of uh, Ocean Drakes. No, it was only seven. Only seven. We were spared. But Ocean Drake going to go over to Darmon. They gather it just to cycle towards the next one, which will be the Mountain Drake. And now we're entering this uh, trough for Flamengo, where their only options were to look through picks with this uh, this Nico and her CC setup. Well, Gonna try it again. If you don't succeed, bring a friend and try again as Nogari. Four people around him, and he should get taken down, but Seraphs had completed. He survives for a little bit longer, and now Showmaker jumps on top of Shrimp. Pop Blossom's there, finds no one. It's Barry, oh, looks for the reset, but doesn't get it. The Void Seeker comes from the back end, and Nuclear locks him down. And Showmaker is underneath the turret, feeling comfortable, but now Robo's turned up. If he gets some of these kills, it's going to be so huge, but he can't find and he, finally the root comes in and Goku locks down Barrel. And that is exactly what Flamengo needed. They force the play again. They say, this is our only option. We have to throw everything in the kitchen sink and they find it. Oh, BRTT caught out. No, it's okay. Land. But, but were we expecting, Frosker, and I'm sorry to cut you off, were we expecting this game to be this heart racing? Because Damwon, once again, very, very even when we're trudging through the mid game. So here's my thing. When teams like to fight a lot, mm -hmm. which uh, Damwon does sometimes have that reputation, uh -huh. you can't just have like a timeout, like a gentleman's agreement and say, no, 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 can we, can we just slow down a little bit? Like if a, if a team wants to step two, the only option that you have is actually to match. And it's kind of why when you watch like the G2s and the Fnatics, the FPXs, like when you have an LPL team in a game, it's probably going to look really bloody and really messy, but that's just kind of the nature of it. You don't get to play slow against that type of style. So I like the fact that both teams are willing to get dirty and throw some punches here. Yeah, if you can force that style, it is certainly worthwhile as Robo does dive on over. Nuggery and Canyon certainly forces to be reckoned with, but not going to go one versus, sorry, two versus two in this instance. And Goku is going to successfully save his top laner. 0, 3, and 4 on the Aatrox, but he has been able to claw back a few more of them minions. Now the thing is, oh dear. while plays like this are working and they are killing people into the side lanes, it's not necessarily translating into objectives for Flamengo. It is a proactive play that doesn't turn into a tower or a dragon or a baron. Um, and it's also expending a lot of cooldowns, a lot of teleports, and a lot of flashes. And so, unfortunately, it means that you're missing those vital cooldowns when a team fight that Damwon happened to win is around an objective like a tower, a dragon, and a baron. And I feel like that's been the story of this game so far, that Flamengo are finding these windows, they are winning some of these fights, but it's not at the right time to maximize what they're, they're taking away. I feel like Damon want to start a fight at the moment because there are no flashes on Brazil's side. Nuclear, the only man on the map that does have one available. He is getting towards his uh, Rage Blade slowly but surely, but sneaking away that kill was certainly good for the Kaiser that has been outranged this entire game. Damon closing in onto Goku, but a bit slippery on the Nico and isn't going to be dying here. I think they're going to dive BRTT. Well, can they actually do so as we've got another dive coming in as Nagari spotted on the Tremor Sense. Gets himself away far enough. They're looking for the Talia ultimate or threatening with it. So this is a really good response from Shrimp and Lucy that they, uh, Damwon have lost members where Flamingo are. So they're respecting the potential that Flamingo have brought the resources. But it does buy time in the end for Damwon Showmaker to get the spot tower. Yep, Showmaker going to be the one that makes that play worthwhile for Damwon. 
across Nogari, forcing so much pressure there on that top side. You can see still surrounded by Flamengo members, even if it is just two of them. But it is going to be just that transition through the jungle. But it is a focus on the top side. Canyon just moves to the bottom lane. They're going to destroy an inner turret and possibly threaten Inhib at this point in time. Because there's a lot of damage here available. And this is the, the formation that Damwon are going to continue to throw out. Again, it's pairing up either the support or the jungler with this Renekton somewhere. Or, or with the Rise and attacking the side lanes. So Flamengo are trying to find... Uh, places that they can hole punch into Danwon Gaming's side lane setup. So again, they they need these team fights, but it, it needs to mean more. They can't just find these these scrappy fights, kill a couple of people while their map and their gold and their minions are being eaten up. And Danwon are again continuing to create a larger and larger gold lead. And it feels like a bit of a gentleman's gentleman's agreement between these two teams. You can see topside vision all completely owned by Flamengo. They've got red wards, even littering the blue side jungle of Darmon Gaming themselves. But that whole top side is well known to them. Bottom side of the map, however, is all about Darmon Gaming. And we'll see who that's going to benefit because 20 minutes has ticked over. My money is on Flamengo working out as one second and now a Mountain Drake is on the map. The first one that feels good for either of these teams. 2.6k, something like that, is not a gold lead that you can really hang your hat on as Beryl. Going to be face checking, gets snared up immediately, but that's a great bone skewer as Shrimp goes gold and wants to take the lantern, but can't. Great timing on the, the shove there as Lucy going to be taken down so damn low and Nuclear dives into the back like Blast Code is god tier, and I don't think it's enough as just the edge of the Culver Meek there from Showmaker locks down the kill. Good sidestep, but the roots in and BRTT is going to be taken down. Pop Blossom under three members, it's a big one, but the death from below is going to be in and Showmaker locks down the Nico as well. The flash from Noggery is so beautiful as he navigates the fight. And now they move back to the Mountain Drake. Just so well executed from Damwon right there. They are so powerful. Even Nuclear, who really struggled in that lane phase. Look at BRTT's itemization comparatively to that Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa, uh, normally a two-item power spike champion. The rapid fire wasn't completed in the last fight. BRTT completed it upon death. And that's the reality of Flamengo. They could fight in that window, but it was such a vital dragon of the Mountain Drake. So they attempted to do so anyway. And this is the right play. Look for a pick, because that's the only way you can win the team fight at this point in the game due to the item power spikes. But they didn't find the pick, and then Damwon just cut, divide, herded them away, uh, herded them around it directly into a meat grinder. Just really beautifully executed on multiple fronts. Yeah, and watching Canyon here as well is just stunning. The seismic shove timing initially was beautiful. This one made sure BRTT was out of the way. Nogari gets himself the route down very comfortably. And Goku, despite the fact that this was very well timed on the Pop Blossom, it was too little too late at flash. that stage of the game. And yeah, Nogari's out of there. Still. Closer than Darmon would have wanted, but at this stage, they've now extended it to a 6,000 gold lead. And I mean, I don't, I don't want to make old references, things like that, but if you look back at old worlds when teams are trying to take on the Titans like SKT in their heyday, it was this feeling of, yes, we're making plays, we're trying to get stuff, but it just never feels like enough. And that's what it's starting to feel like here this, this game, despite the early game that worked well. And now Showmaker, remember, he can stun so many times, but after the Dominus, wasn't able to close the distance to get another Ruthless Predator. And Robo survives with his splash up. But I think a point made for Robo and Showmaker yeah. right there, that that is going to continue to be how Damwon split up the map and pull Flamengo around. We are uh, basically waiting on BRTT. That's the next big moment where Flamengo fans can start to feel more confident in their team again. And it's going to take a while. I mean, I feel like Caitlyn is either a three or four item carry. You really do need to invest to try and get her there. Unfortunately, I think because Renekton is so far ahead right now and he's right. able to get um, some of his defensive-ish itemization out, mm -hmm. um, that it's actually going to be a four-item Caitlyn because she's going to need access to more DPS than just the three-item. Yeah, I think Makura's Scimitar will need to come in, and we'll see what else BRTT is going to go for. I will say at this point in the game, um, Caitlyn doesn't necessarily have to be that big team fighting threat. Uh, with the rapid fire cannon and then just headshot, she can actually be used as a poke yeah, champion, poke, yeah. like what she just did to nuke there right there. But then that means that our eyes are on Shrimp and Goku as kind of the follow-up. So VRTT right now is literally just a poke machine. You need Shrimp and Goku to follow up on that poke damage. Well, there's ults traded here between Showmaker and Robo, but I like it. Just gets the heck out of there as soon as he sees the ultimate button because it does a whole lot more with that Spear of Sojourn online. 
Speaking of items that are online, Nogari does have his Spellbinder. He needs to be really careful. The showmaker. He's hungry for some Caitlyn. Not going to get him as Lucy tagged by the Void Seeker. I think they're in trouble. Yep, Canyon. He can set up a wall if he wants to. He's holding on to the button for the moment. It was looking really dangerous there for Flamengo, but they do survive the storm. Two minutes, and we've got a Cloud Drake on the board, and the Baron is still not really being looked at by either side. No wards inside the pit, but you can see Darmon with a lot of control wards around it. Nagari very comfortably just farming minion wave after minion wave. Just going to soon be that uh, rise threat that we know he can be. So I felt that they were waiting for specific itemization to come in. So uh, Showmaker has just now completed his third item. Mm -hmm. And so normally when you see a team, especially one as practiced as uh, Damwon in their Baron setup, not turn towards the Baron. It feels like they're almost extending the the farming portion of the game uh, and saying, okay, as soon as I get this item, like I'm close to it, we might as well wait for it before they start setting up the fight. So I think that's what is about to happen. We now have the backs in from Damwon from all of this farming that they've been doing. You have Showmaker who is setting up the bot lane wave, has access to his TP, and it's going to be the setup for the Baron in the next 30 seconds to probably a minute and a half. And Flamengo recognized this. They're like, okay, you know, we can no longer deal with this, this side lane threat. Um, we need to quickly get in here, place as much vision as possible, and then again, stall out this potential Baron. Well, that's a great block there on the Bone Skewer with the Shape Shifter coming out from Goku. But you can see Renekton has pushed that minion wave all the way towards the inhibitor turret. Now Lucy tagged once again. This is a fair bit of damage actually coming out of nuclear. As Showmaker's well. behind them. Just forward. Yep, seismic shove once again. Flash by BRTT. But how is he supposed to save himself as the wall comes down? He's just going to walk behind his team. He will survive for the moment. Showmaker closing in on the back line. But not close enough. Very, very rough. But it is a Flamengo team that were able to avoid the engage. I'm going to say that I think uh, Canyon's ultimate actually close Showmaker around from the flank, but they immediately use the Rise ultimate. They're now on the Baron. That is a Mountain Drake. Yep, Realm walk towards the Baron pit. We'll see whether they got enough damage, and they certainly do. The Baron is dead in about four seconds. And Lucy now flashing to try and get a flame, but misses the hook. It's a fight on a couple of fronts as Nogger is trying to get out of the way as the Seraph Shield is gigantic. The rest of the fight is going well, though, as the Rek'Sai does eventually take down the Rise. But now the resets. The Pop Blossom comes forward, but it's under a Golden Canyon as Robo's down to about half. Shrimp is out of this fight, but Goku's landing the snares. Can he get it again? No, he can't. He's diced up by the Crocodile as Canyon out of mana, just driving by Nuclear. Grabs that kill off the back end, and it's an ace out of nowhere for Darwin, but it looks so close at the beginning to be good for Flamengo. Except when you put your eyes down on Showmaker, who just watched through this replay, this man is like 1v3 at some point. 1v2 for majority of it, but just no one can stop him. Look at the damage that he's doing. Robo and Shrimp are just playing with this giant gator while his carries are being obliterated. That was the problem, and it felt like there was a bit of tunneling onto Nogari there, which allowed Showmaker to get so much free damage unanswered. And I can't even blame Flamengo for that, because you look at Nogari's name, you're like, I want to get him out of the team fight before he does so much DPS, like you can do on the rise. And unfortunately, despite the game plan being understandable, it didn't work out, because like you say, when you've just got the back lines fighting each other, it just wasn't good enough. Speaking of not good enough, this is what happens. The damage trough that BRTT is in right now, that low damage number is purely based on the champion that he is at this stage of the game. It was a, it felt like a handshake from Damwon to split the map. Looked good for Flamengo when, you know, Shrimp picked up those two kills, but otherwise it has just been all downhill for Showmaker versus Robo in that top, uh, that top lane. And because, again, Renekton is so far ahead of the clock, uh, BRTT doesn't need three items, he needs four items before he can even do any damage to Showmaker. And unfortunately, Flamengo just don't have the damage to deal with Damwon's threats right now. Yeah, and we talk about the Caitlyn and trying to get online at four items and things like that, but if the game is accelerated out of your control, you look at Damwon and they've got Rise. Massive late game damage and nuclear is the AP Kaiser already has those first three items that you need in the Nash's Tooth, the Rage Blade and uh, the completed Muramana. And now with a pretty cool stick on top of it as well in the Nizli Large Rod, just boosting up that Void Seeker damage. You can see Lucy taking a lot of poke from this particular Kaiser. 
as they've split the map. You've got a Crocodile top lane, you've got a Kai'Sa mid lane, and the rest of them are hanging around the bottom side. Robo caught behind the wall, wants to Umbral dash in, but not going to be able to. Has to take a Lantern in order to get out. Showmaker, in the meantime, 1v1 against Goku, but is he going to be able to get held down? That's what this comp could theoretically do. The color meek is gigantic. The rest of the team coming on over. It's a one for one so far as the death from below did register. Lots of money as Nogri picks up yet another kill. But the towers are crumbling and it's too little too late from Flamengo. There's one in here, looks to be followed by two more. Don Juan could look for the end here. Yeah, Lucy just dies as an afterthought as Robo now snared up Nogri underneath turrets. He loves it here. That seems like his natural habitat. Getting towards the fountain, the pullback beautiful by Beryl. But Robo does have some of the damage still available. Gets one of them. It's just not enough. Flamengo on their fountain. Nuclear now playing gatekeeper as Nexus turrets are getting destroyed. There are four billion minions as they're on the fountain. Robo is taken down as the minions are taking up the damn fountain laser. As now Goku's going to fall, Nuclear's going to use his flash because he may as well. And finally, the Nexus gets its due. Darmon 2-0 on their first day. And I with a fountain play like that, you can tell that Damwon are really feeling themselves right now. I feel like it's still the European holiday for Oscar and sort of what we coined it in their first day out. This is a dumb one having fun, but Nuclear will be having way more fun after that performance. Brilliant on the Kaisa, undying after being a bit of a problem factor in their matchup against Royal Youth. Was de definitely dominance, was landing the Void Seekers that he needed to. And this is what we expected about this, uh, uh, from this dumb one squad. We really wanted to see them come out and dominate because this is Korea for the first time in the playing stage. We need to show the world why that shouldn't be a thing. But now you have a really good measuring stick of Royal Youth and Flamengo versus Danmon. And frankly, it felt like Flamengo were willing to go a lot more kind of tit for tat yeah. against uh, the LCK seed. And so I think that's what that's what most people are going to be looking at the tape of and trying to figure out as we kind of speed towards that matchup. Because it was very clear, LCK probably going to be the number one seed out of this yeah. group. But with Royal Youth and Flamengo, two teams that uh, a lot of analysts are saying are hyper competitive in the emerging regions, like that's where the real trial is going to come here. Yeah, that really is. It feels like the group of death, right? I, I don't want any of these teams to be el eliminated from this group. And the thing that I find really interesting is the fact that we haven't actually learned that much as far as who's going to win the eye test between these two, because both Royal Youth and Flamengo had different strategies in mind when it came to tackling Darmwon. Neither of them necessarily worked, but there was merit on both sides. And it's also just so hard to uh, gauge the top laners. Arma and Robo both didn't really have the greatest time. Arma, I think, felt a little bit better in terms of what yeah. he was transferring into team fights, whereas Robo just got shut out so early in the game um, by kind of design of what happened with the vertical jungling. So. My eyes are actually going to be on the top lane and what seems to be a group defined by the solo laners and by the top laners in particular. Yeah, and I guess a lot has to be said for what Ender was talking about as well at the beginning with the fact that Darmwon came in, looked shaky in game one. It is understandable that they would look even more formidable moving into their second match here at World. So in theory, if both uh, Flamengo and Royal Youth looked about the same, then Flamengo need a few added props, especially after the, the draft phase, because I felt like Damwon's draft this game was really, really nice. Yeah, I think uh, back to the drawing board, it's pretty easy to maybe not go for the Caitlyn. I understand like trying yeah. to find the, a dominant lane phase and not that BRTT can't play it, but I would have loved to see him more on something like a Lucian and have a, a lot more aggression in the lane phase. Well, certainly more opportunities for Flamengo. To learn more about how Canyon